Hey everybody, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the compass on the Garmin Instinct crossover watch. I'm using the solar version. It shouldn't matter whether you've got the solar or non-solar. This video should work the same for everybody. I'll also say I'm not an expert when it comes to all the different options you have on the compass. What I want to do in this video is basically show you what the compass looks like and show you what those options are in case you're sitting out there trying to debate if you should buy this watch or not, and the compass is one of the features that you're curious about. There's a, bu a bunch of different ways we can look at compass on the Garmin Instinct crossover watch. If you're doing navigation, it can be one of your pages. It can also be a field that basically shows you which direction you're going. And then you've got two different glances that you can also put on the watch that will show you the compass. That's what I'm gonna be showing you today. The first one is called the ABC glance. ABC is for altimeter, barometer, and compass. I've already added them to my glance list. I'm not going to walk through adding them here, but if I simply press the up button, it will take me to my glances. The very bottom glance that we're looking at right now is the ABC glance. It, it's kind of a three-in-one glance. From one glance, I can see what direction am I facing, what's my elevation, and then this arrow over here is what is my barometric pressure trend over the last several hours. As with any glance, you can kind of see some basic information from the glance uh, loop. If you press the GPS to go into the glance, it's going to take over the whole page. It's going to make it easier to see. So again, that's the direction that I'm facing, 93 degrees. My elevation is 250 feet, and then my barometric pressure has been stable. This is an important thing because as you're hiking, this glance is pretty cool. It shows you whether or not You've got uh, any change in barometric pressure, which can be maybe bad weather coming. You can also track your elevation changes, and then you know what direction you are heading. That's a look at the ABC glance. I'm going to press the back button, and I'm going to go, I'm back in my glance listing. I'm going to use the up button, and then this is what the compass glance looks like. If you look at these two glances side by side, it's basically the same thing. The only difference is the compass glance gives me my degrees the direction I'm facing, but it doesn't show me the altitude or barometric pressure change like the ABC glance shows. I'm going to press the GPS button to go into the compass glance, and then this is what the compass glance looks like. While you're in your compass, if you press and hold the menu button, it will take you to your compass options. This is where I was saying I'm not really an expert, but I'm going to run through and I'm going to show you the different options. Press GPS to go into your compass options. Your first option is going to be if you needed to manually calibrate your compass, you would press GPS and you would do a calibration. The compass comes automatically calibrated from Garmin and then it has an automatic calibration feature. So hopefully you would never need to use this. If you do, basically they have you put the watch on your wrist and you just do a figure eight formation for a few minutes and it will recalibrate the compass. It's very simple. If we go down to display, we have a couple different options for our display. Mine was displaying in degrees. I can press the GPS button and I can choose to display it in mils instead of degrees. Your north reference, you have a few different options for your north reference. You can have a true north reference. You can set it to use grid, or I'm sorry, set it for magnetic. You can set a grid, or you can set it based on uh, user. And then last but not least, you have some mode options. So you'll notice that my mode is set to auto. The compass basically can use either GPS to determine which direction you're heading or magnetic ohmmeter, which is going to be um, data, sensor data, electronic sensor data from the watch. You can set it to use one or the other. So if you just wanted to use GPS, you could put it on GPS. I think most people would use auto where basically the watch is going to pick and choose based on what it thinks. If you're navigating and it knows you're moving, it's probably going to use your GPS. If you're sitting still like me right now, it's probably going to be using the magnetic ohmmeter. But those are going to be your options for the compass. Once you're done with the options, you can simply press the back button and you're back at your compass. As long as you're moving, I don't think it will kick you out of the compass mode. I've had some watches in the past, like some Casio watches, that after a couple minutes in the compass mode, it will automatically kick you out. Maybe I'll sit here for a second, and we'll just move around a little bit. I think the way this one works is as long as it's moving, it will keep you in. Once it senses that you are no longer moving, 
then it'll basically start a countdown and kick you out of the compass mode. It's funny, I don't really use the compass mode. I don't do a whole lot of hiking and stuff. And when I am out hunting or hiking, I tend to be on land that I've been on before, so I kind of know the direction I'm heading. I will use the compass on occasion just to quickly connect to it and see what direction I'm facing if I'm in an area I'm not familiar with. But I do more of navigating where I basically navigate back to a safe location or a point, but I don't usually use the compass for navigating. I basically just follow the breadcrumb trail in the navigation activity. Anyway, that's a look at the compass. Once you're done, you can simply press the back button a couple times. And that's what the compass looks like on the Garmin Instinct crossover watch. As always, I hope the video helps. Thanks for watching.